I am live right now on Kellogg's Garden Facebook page. Uh, I am Lisa E. Lee. I have my own YouTube channel and my own kind of fun way of gardening with my kids and helping families and kids get excited about gardening over at Lisa E. Lee Gardens. I'm always excited to partner up with Kellogg. I've been working with them for years to help start school gardens, to come up with fun ideas, and always to play with healthy, healthy dirt. So uh, I'm really excited that they've invited me in and over here to come share some of my ideas with you guys as we get ready for back to school. And I see a few of you already are joining us. Um, I may have popped in a minute early, so I am just going to hang out for a minute and wait for a few people. Uh, while you are here, definitely please say hi, pop in, like, give a thumbs up, let us know that you like these ideas, or, oh, I see the thumbs up already, thank you. Or more importantly, give me your questions. Let me know what questions you might have for getting your kids excited and growing enthusiasm in the garden with them, or share your ideas. Perhaps there's something that's been working really great for you in your garden with the kids, or even at your schools. Uh, we have someone from New Orleans. Thank you. Hey, Sherry. Shauna. Excellent. Welcome. I think you may have joined us before, so I'm glad you are here, and I appreciate you saying hi. Uh, Kellogg works really hard with so many different gardeners across our country to share ideas and get everyone inspired uh, to garden. So, with that said, uh, I'm going to reintroduce myself. I'm Lisa Ely. I love to garden with kids. I am not a master gardener, but I've become a master at playing and having fun in the garden and getting my hands dirty. And I will tell you something I've learned mostly about gardening with kids is you don't have to be perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. And as we get ready for the new school season, when all our kids are getting ready to go back to school to learn, I think it's really important for us to remember those lessons in the garden go ahead and try new things be creative make mistakes so you can learn this is the place where kids are allowed to make mistakes and experiment uh, my kids have always loved the idea that we could plant two tomato plants water one and not water the other or water one the correct way and totally over water the other plant do you know what happens it's something that makes it fun for the kids to go out every single day and experiment. And obviously when you don't water a tomato plant, it's not going to grow or fruit any tomatoes. But when you overwater it, at some point you start getting excited because it almost explodes. And I'm seeing Shauna, oh, you are getting ready for your fall garden. That is fantastic. It's almost time for the fall season, depending on where you live. I'm in Southern California, so we're still dealing with some really hot weather, so we're kind of in that transitional stage. If you're like me, it doesn't mean don't garden. Our summer garden's kind of getting ready to clean and get rid of everything, but it's time to start planning. What can we do in our fall garden to get everyone excited? So that's kind of what I'm here today. Um, Kids are getting ready to go back to school if they're not at school yet. My kids, I have a seventh grader and a soon to be fifth grader. They start school in two days. So they are out and about kind of getting their last summer fun in. Um, but we are still thinking about what we can do in the garden to complement what they're doing in school. And whether you have a pre-K student or a high school student, there is always hands-on projects to do. Um, so the first thing is, obviously going back to school, what do we think about? The A, B, C's. So why not challenge your kids at the garden nursery or even research online, how do they create a A, B, C garden? Um, Go to your local nursery. I know Sean is curious about zone nine. This is the best thing is go to your local nursery. What is being sold there as seedlings in the little packs is what is good for your zone. Most of the nurseries, especially your homegrown nurseries, the smaller mom and pop shop nurseries, they sell what is good for your zone. So that's the best thing. And there are plants that grow everywhere, which is great. And if something doesn't quite plant, but your kids really want to grow something that's not quite right for your zone, 
send them out there to grow it. Grab that seed and plant it. Even if you're in zone nine and it's a plant that's not right for that zone, plant it anyway because that's how to get kids to understand the different zones. Uh, I'm in the Mediterranean climate, even though we have desert-like temperatures. So we're really lucky. We can grow quite a bit of everything. Obviously, wherever you are in the country, you don't have that flexibility, but it doesn't mean you can't try. Again, when something doesn't grow, kids go, well, why didn't it grow? What, what was it? And whether you check if it's your soil, did you have enough soil to aerate and let the roots grow? Was your soil really good? Or was it because our temperatures at night got too cold? Especially when you start getting junior high and high school level, this is where studying the weather, going out every day, figuring out, okay, what's the temperature during the day, but when is my freezing point happening? And all of that comes into fruition when you're playing. But back to the A to Z garden. So I challenged my kids yesterday. We ran to the nursery and I said, go find a plant that starts with an A, if I really had a giant garden, I would have loved to have had a plant for every single letter of the alphabet. But I said find A and Z, not A to Z. And they came up with alyssum. This is a great bedding little flower plant. It um, almost grows like a weed, so in the kid's garden, this is great. It also is attracts the pollinators and it smells really, really sweet. It's really pretty. It's got the tons of little white flowers. So this is great for an A plant. So if I were to put this in the garden, I could then ask my kids to go find a rock and write the letter A on it. And they could plant this right by there. And now every day, especially if you have kids who are just learning the alphabet, how awesome. Tell them to go outside and water the A plant. And you put the letters, or whether it's a B or the A, you put that around the different plants that you want them to water. And this is how they start learning how to, you know, read the letters and spell them. Um, you could also have rocks in your garden. You could paint these really vibrant. I like more of a natural garden, even though I love having my kids garden, I don't like them to be cluttered with a bunch of plastic garden tchotchke stuff. It's still a garden that we enjoy as a family. So I like that these are just natural rocks with the letter on it. Um, my son at one point was having some struggles. I remember, I think it was in the second grade, doing some of his multiplications. So what I did is I went and we put numbers on the rocks and then I would tell him, th there was one through zero, I would tell him, okay, go find the rocks that equal up to two times four. And he'd go find the eight, and then I would tell him to water that plant or to see if that plant was ready to harvest. So it was really fun, and it becomes kind of a search and hunt. So they're getting outside, being in the garden, and they don't realize how much outside nature time they're doing. So we're taking them away from those cell phones or their Fortnite, which is still really fun. How many of you guys know that dance, right? Um, I've been told not to do it anymore. It's not cool, so apparently Fortnite dancing is not the thing and neither is dabbing, but hey, I'm looking forward to the school year starting so we can figure out what is cool, so I can be cool. But letters on rocks, really easy. Um, our Z plant, zinnias. So this is a great flowering plant. It is so pretty. It works, I believe, in zones kind of two through 12. Um, this is very common. It was funny, when it was first grown in the US, it was considered a poor man's plant because it grew like weeds again. But zinnias are really, really great. And I love, a lot of times we talk about vegetable gardening for kids, but don't forget, flowers are a garden too. And zinnias are awesome for kids because I'm gonna show you something. Let me just take one of these off here. So with the zinnia plant, this is called a cut and grow or cut and take flower plant. So the zinnia grows, look at that, it's really pretty. If you want kids to be out there learning math, you could say, go find me two plus six petals. And they go count and they have to add up to eight. So don't tell them to go find eight petals, tell them to go count two plus six. So they're learning that counting. Or tell them to find what's the average amount of petals on these flowers. So we're incorporating their school lessons still in the garden, which is really great. Oh, it looks like Sheila is joining us and Charlene. Hello, welcome you guys. Please definitely let us know what you have growing in your garden and where you are watching from. I'm in Southern California, still fighting the 100 degree weather, but uh, we are thankfully away from the fires. I feel so, 
sad for so many friends and family who are fighting those. So hopefully, I'm sure they are not watching right now. They have other things, but they can come back and rewatch this video. But back to our A to Z gardens, we have zinnias. So zinnias is a great flowering plant. And what I love about this is this is great for picking flowers. How many of us have teacher days or teacher appreciations and the kids have to go get a flower? You don't need to go spend a lot of money. Grow it in the backyard. And how awesome is that for a child to say, here you go, teacher, have a great day. A flower a day makes you smile. I promise. But the best part about the zinnia is for kids, when you go pick this flower, here, I'm going to crawl in here, pick it, you can see I kind of cut it right there. Make sure there's two leaves underneath. So if I were to trim right here, this little bud will then sprout two more branches. And within a few days, this will start having more flowers. So the kids can go out there and watch. Again, gardening with kids, you don't want them to lose interest. So it's about watching a plant grow, but what else can we do to get them out there watching? And that's a great science project because what is it about that plant that made it grow two more flowers? Um, and I love, love the zinnias. Again, it's a flower that you can take, you can share with school administration, you can take it, you can give it to the teachers and the kids can play with it. These are also really good for dr drying. So you could squish it into a book. Remember the old fashioned way of just pressing flowers? Oh my goodness, you guys are giving me all compliments. I appreciate it. But uh, pressing the flowers, having fun with it, working on colors. What color is this? What color is in here? Again, kids are learning. So I love that. Other A to Z garden ideas is just to go get your seeds. So again, we had the zinnias. So there's the zinnia seeds. We have a arugula. So another A plant, even if you're not ready to plant a full A to Z garden, why don't you start with the letter of the alphabet and get a single pot and grow some arugula? Or what about for the B, a beet? Challenge your kids to try to think of a list of what they can go find versus once they get there. And make sure you have time at the nursery to go find all the different items. Look at the carrots for C. We have, oh, look at this, I love this. So in these packets, the seeds come in the little plastic packs so the kids can actually see. Um, and this is something else. As you start planting a new garden for the season or an ABC garden, don't plant all the seeds. So this is something we've always done with my kids is I make a seed chart. So check this out. So this is a seed chart and I realize I have my camera on reverse. So sorry, the letters are backwards here. I should have written it the right way. But this is a seed chart. And all I do is I take a couple seeds before we plant them. And I thankfully have been gardening for a long time. So I know what these seeds are. But if you need to make a cheat sheet, just write what seed it is on back or give yourself a photocopy of this and then write it. And then what's really fun is when you start, whether it's from your garden that you're eating the vegetables or it's something you've actually grown, when you have a carrot, oh yeah, look at my son is growing carrots. Oh my God, we're having so much fun harvesting them. And where I am in California, we can grow them all year. This is a root vegetable. Oh, we must have harvested it a day or two. It's a little flimsy. <laughs> Hello. Look at, I look like a little alien, watch. So there's two of them, so always playing, right? Oh, more like a ram or a bull. Arr. I'm sorry, see, I play with food, it's all the time. But when we start eating the carrots, I put this in front of them when we serve it and say, which seed did this come from? So you start teaching them and it becomes a matching game. Gets them really excited about growing the vegetables, but how great you're teaching them. Wow, do either any of you guys, can you see which one is the carrot? There's carrot and lettuce, but this is our carrot seed right down at the bottom. But the kids get to go, oh yeah, that was a carrot. And it reminds them a hundred days ago, they planted that and all of a sudden, it's grown into this because you kind of forget. Once you start gardening, you forget where a plant started from. So this is really fun. Oh, hey, Jennifer, thank you for joining us. I really love having you guys all join. We're just talking about fun ideas that are happening as school starts. Um, the idea that we can still be playing in the garden. Uh, with school starting, how many of you guys have been out there doing the back to school shopping? Um, 
I don't even have kids in kindergarten anymore, but I'm addicted to buying the penny glues over at the office stores or the box of crayons for 25 cents. Um, I am totally addicted to finding a great bargain and stocking up for the year or being able to provide gifts to teachers, which obviously everyone loves having the really good crayons and if we can buy them for a quarter each, it's awesome. Wow, thank you so much from Georgia. Hey, Evie. Um, but the one thing is when we all start doing back to school shopping, I do want to kind of warn you, back to school shopping and getting great deals is great except for plants. So I know at most, especially the big garden warehouses, they have their discounted bargain plants. Have you guys seen those dollar plants or the $2 plant? And it looks like it's such a great deal. However, when you're gardening with kids, you want to make sure you give them healthy plants. And the plants that are on those discount racks, if you're a master gardener, I applaud you. Go save those plants. You know the science that it takes to get those plants growing. However, when you're planting these seedlings with kids, to go get a plant off the discount rack, chances are they're either really soggy and bogged down, so the roots are really mushy. If you pull them out and look at them, you'll see they're really mushy, or they haven't been watered for a while, sometimes with different climate temperatures or depending on what's going on at the storage of the different plants, those plants get dried out. So they're trying to clear them off the rack. It seems like it's a great deal. It's a $2 plant that's normally eight, but if you're gardening with kids, this is where saving money on school supplies, maybe you can still spend it on the healthy plants. And when you are shopping with kids and going back, getting ready for back to school, give them a lesson. Teach them about what to look for. And this is just a sweet potato vine that we picked up yesterday. Um, but this is where my kids really know. Pull it out and look for a healthy root system. Do you guys see that? That is really healthy. And also, in the very bottom, there's no roots growing out. If the roots start growing out of the bottom, it means that it's been there for a while, and chances are the bottom, the mouth of the roots, how I explained to the kids, the mouth is not able to suck up that water because it's been drying. So make sure you find a plant that doesn't have roots coming out the holes and that has really nice white root systems. So this is a really great tip to really start your school gardens or your garden at school at home for school. Now, if you have a young student, someone who's just getting ready to start kindergarten, maybe you've just said goodbye to your little kindergartner right now, it's Tuesday and a lot of schools are starting, it's really hard. Um, I will warn you, most schools do the 100 days of school celebration. So I have a fun idea using how many of you guys have your pool noodles? Look at this, pool noodles. Oh my goodness, we've played with them all summer long in the pool, but now they're just gonna get all crumbly and dried out. They're not gonna be good for next year, especially if you leave them out in the sun. Um, so why not recycle them for the garden? There's some fun things we can do to kind of dress up our garden. And the first thing is this idea. Look at this little caterpillar. What a fun use of the pool noodle. All I did was cut off the edge and made a little circle piece and then glued it together. Now, if my kids were still in kindergarten or if you have a grandchild in kindergarten, cut off a pool noodle section for every single day of school and keep having them added into the garden. So they're gonna see their caterpillar grow in the garden with each day of school. And when they get to 100 days of school, you don't have to go run around now and try to figure out how to put little pom-poms on a t-shirt or googly eyes on a piece of paper. You'll already have your 100 day of school project and it will be a very unique giant caterpillar that came straight from the garden. What else is great is the kids can actually measure this, gar this caterpillar each day and see how much it's growing and then compare that to what's growing in the garden. How much are their plants growing? So this is just a fun little clever idea. If you have friends who are kindergarten parents, remind them, hey, 100 days of school is a big deal. So have them make these little caterpillars recycling all of our pool noodles from the summer. Um, another idea I had that I absolutely love, and I teach a lot in school gardens. Um, I help establish school gardens, and Kellogg has been a great partner in that because every school garden needs really good soil to begin with. And as we all know, Kellogg has that great soil. Um, but in a school garden, I use a pool noodle 
to make our um, plant markers. So look at this. It's a fun little back to school present with the basil. And if you, you know, learning how to write or spell, this is the basil. And all you do to make these, it's really fun. I'm gonna grab my pool noodle here. So look at that, just a really old pool noodle from the summer. Obviously it could be a little telescope, um, but you just cut. And I just get a little saw. I have just a little hand saw and I cut it. It's pretty easy to do. What's fun is if you're teaching kids about tools, they can do this themselves. And you just cut off a piece. So that's gonna be my pencil part. And then I have another color here. Let's see purple. This is gonna be the eraser for the pencil. Let's cut that. And the tip of the pencil. So I'm just going to cut that. You can see how easy that cut. And then all you do is get some either black kind of work tape or duct tape. And you just tape these together. And what a cool little fun gift for a back to school teacher, a back to school item for your teachers is you just kind of tape that around. As you can see, I made the end of a pencil and then that's my finished one. All I did was carved the other end of this to make the tip of the pencil. And then I just have a little stake. I just literally punched a hole in this and then put it in and then it becomes the plant marker. So this is a really fun way. Marking plants with kids is a fun, fun thing for them. Um, also, what if I took this to a teacher? First day of school, how impressive. Instead of taking a bunch of different, you know, candies or coffees, why not give them something that they can have in the classroom learning? So look at that. What a nice little welcome to school gift and the kids in that classroom can really watch the basil grow or whatever plant you choose. But I absolutely love these little markers and it's something I love because I'm using and recycling the pool noodles from our fun summer. So I hope you guys like that idea. You can also use the pool noodles just as a flower vase to take to your teacher. So you don't have to have anything great, but look at that, just a nice little vase. Again, the zinnias, our Z plant, just pops right in there. And now it's an easy holder for those flowers and it becomes a nice little vase. So you could line these up all different colors, but recycle those pool noodles. Don't just throw them away. And I know I absolutely just go bonkers when all these pool noodles are flying all over my garage. So this is fan. Fantastic. Um, again, thank you guys all for joining. I think it looks like Trishel just joined. Thank you. I know she has a kindergartner starting. Uh, Trishel, you'll have to go back if you didn't see it. The 100 day project idea. So you'll definitely want to get Paris cutting the pool noodles up each day and making a caterpillar for every day of kindergarten and your 100 day project will be already done. So this is really fun. Um, another great idea for starting back to school, especially if you have a school garden, if you're lucky to have a garden at your school, and I don't know if I ever showed you guys this, this was a gift that a friend Stephanie made for me, but this is good even if you don't have kids in school, but you have a garden club or you need an auction idea, um, check out this wreath. How many of you guys would love to have this wreath? It is a wreath of seeds and I absolutely love the bow is made with the little tools and all it is hey Ty how are you all it is is a little metal wreath that the seeds for the season were grown onto. now for educational purposes we could do a b c d all the way around and then you can plant these seeds when the kids feel like it and I absolutely love this idea for learning because you have this hanging on a wall and you help the kids kind of see what their garden might look like in the fall based on this. It's a really pretty decoration. Um, I know I've shared it before and people have loved it. I actually think Charlene, you made one one time and sent a picture. Maybe you can share again with how cute yours turned out. So this is a fun idea. It also shakes, it rattles, it's a lot of fun. Um, so these are just some really fun ideas to get kids learning, still participating in the garden. 
Um, when you do have them gardening, start using their lessons they're learning in school, whether it's in junior high or high school. Math, hands-on math is tough to do. How many of us grew up going, why would I ever need to know that math? I'm just gonna use my calculator. Guess what, we use math for everything. So when the kids are starting to learn how to use rulers or they're looking at square footage, ask them to go out to your garden. Figure out the square footage. How many carrots, based on how many inches it, they need, could you actually plant in a square foot area of your garden? Or have them actually go plant the seeds. Don't do the holes for them. Make them measure, use a ruler, and actually have them measure this where the seeds go. As adults, it's very easy as for us to draw a line um, for our peas. I know, because I've been gardening for so long, I know exactly where two inches is. So I can drop my peas in pretty easily. Make sure when you're doing the garden with the kids, when you're back to school and they're just learning how to measure, give them the time to actually measure out two inches between every single pea. And then maybe have them measure eight inches between one and maybe only have half an inch and teach them what's the difference. And then you could actually even use a recycled pool marker to say this was two inches or this was my eight inches and have them study it. The whole idea, obviously you wanna get your peas and you wanna eat them, but you want kids to learn. And if you make mistakes or you encourage doing what's not typically right, if you encourage them to do what's wrong, that's when they're gonna learn the most about how important um, the seed spacing is. So make them do it wrong. Uh, when, I, when I teach in a school garden, we do that all over the place. The school garden to any master gardener when they come in looks a mess, but it's because we're experimenting and we're studying what happens in different kind of scenarios and that's how kids are going to learn also a measuring cup i know we all love our cute fancy watering cans but when we're working with kids in the garden get rid of that because how great is this that the kids are going to learn the measurements because when you say how much water do you think a plant needs they can actually go estimate maybe i'll give my plant two cups today versus four cups and our kids are going to start learning just by reading they're gonna learn that there's two pints in four cups. How many of you guys even knew that? Guess what, if you use a watering can, although they look cute, they don't learn as much. So go get, this is just from one of those dollar stores. It's a plastic measuring cup. If a kid has to go do a couple different trips to go get water, that's okay. Um, I love that there's something the kitchen wall to talk, oh, in the classroom, that is awesome. Sorry, I got distracted. Jennifer's sharing some ideas down there. So thank you, Jennifer, I love that. I love when schools start having the gardens too. And if you're a parent who wants to get a garden in your school, it kind of, it's a no brainer. Every school should have a garden because in every garden there's a classroom, whether it's at home or at school. I love having gardens everywhere. I think we should have them both at home and at school. Um, I will tell you, if you're getting ready or you really wanna have a school garden, I know I get asked a lot, make sure you get the buy-in from your teachers and administrators first. Creating a school garden, although it's really great and fun, remember, you're only going to be at the school for so long. So it's important to create a real plan of action that will allow that school and that administration to sustain the garden. It's not cheap to start the garden, but once it gets going, the return on your investment is huge. Um, but start getting a buy-in from your school administration first. Don't just say, hey, I want a garden. Um, I know I am proudly a member of the PTA. We do so much for kids in our schools, um, but I've had to learn because when I, my kids first started, I was the PTA mom going, I want a garden, let's get a garden going. And then I realized, you know what, if I just go do a garden, no one even has the schedule or the time or the knowledge to go use the garden. So the first thing to come up with is a plan. Figure out who in your district, who in your school is willing and ready to support the garden. And then make sure the teachers realize it's not just about gardening. Yes, gardening is all about nutrition. It's about life and earth science. But like I showed you, it's about math. 
It's about measuring. It's about arts and crafts. We made this with the little pool noodles. This is an art project that could be used for an art class, which is so important. This is all hands-on. So I encourage having a school garden at home, but also definitely try to work with your schools to get gardens at school, even if it's a single pot of zinnias. Maybe there's a flower for each student and they can watch and see. They can all harvest one and then watch and count the days until new buds start popping up. So I absolutely love that. Um, definitely, Jennifer is saying, have the kids eat what they grow. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, my kids eat straight from the dirt. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think it's great because we never, we rarely get our vegetables home. We usually just eat them right out of the plot. I did make my son save those carrots so I could share them with you today. Um, but we had lines and lines of carrots growing. So there's, there's something about having that completion of planting something. There's something about having the zinnias. And when you get to have a cut and grow and you get to make a bouquet out of flowers you've grown, and you smell it and you experiment. Maybe you make a shadow drawing. You hold this up and you learn about shadows and then you learn how to draw a flower. It's so great to let kids, whether they're eating the plants they grow or they're playing with the plants they're growing. It's really important because there's a lesson with everything. So um, I think that's about it. I will show you what my kids take also for back to school. So we have rosemary. Instead of going and buying great bouquets, this the kids will just put a little ribbon around and this is a really fun way to start a conversation with their new teachers. Uh, we make basil bunches too with a little you know card that says I'm ready to grow with you just like I grew my own basil or I grew my own rosemary. Um, it's a conversation starter. All of a sudden the, the students get to stand out. They get to take a moment to say, hey, I grew this. I have a special hobby at home. We actually garden. So it makes the, it creates an instant bond with someone, with a teacher, with classmates that they get to share. So I know these are great. I always do this when I get invited over to a breakfast with a friend or a tea or anything. Um, I always take something from my garden and it gives you that awkward moment when you're not quite sure what to talk about. You can talk about your garden. Um, and kids are very proud to take their basil and the rosemary to share it with teachers. So I hope you guys are excited about being back to school. Uh, Evie, thank you. I know the zinnias are awesome. I wish I could take credit for it, but this is actually my son's plant. So Rifkin comes over and takes care of it and waters it and counts it. So I know he has to kind of come do a little bit of the deadheading, but uh, we're really lucky that the colors really pop here. So another reason why I love this Z plant, the zinnias. Um, and it looks like Jennifer's talking about you can eat flowers too. Absolutely. Now, when I am teaching younger kids about flowers in the garden, uh, it's so much fun to have a garden party and eat the flowers. However, remember with kids, they don't quite understand the difference yet between what's edible, what's not. Obviously, when you get into the higher grade levels, especially if lots of kids are doing career tech now and they have culinary in the schools, having them plant and eat actually some of the fresh flowers is actually a really fun way to decorate the plate, but you do need to be careful and make sure you're educating that not all flowers are edible. But then again, not all plants are edible. We teach them to eat the rosemary and the basil, but stay away from something that's not edible. So it's a matter of just education and getting them, uh, encouraging them to have fun, explore, get hands on in the garden, dig in and, um, Go have fun so i hope this was good for you guys it was just a couple little stream of thought things that we're doing in our garden to get ready for back to school and by far this is my favorite we love recycling our pool noodles so another thing you could use this pool noodle for is just to stake um you know around tomato cages how sometimes the plants start really kind of spiraling or uh, bean plants it starts like crimping the plant actually if you just slice a pool noodle and wrap this around the top of your tomato cage or your bean poles that actually would probably give a nice bigger area for the beans to grow on and add a little color to your garden making making it a little bit more playful so uh one more idea for recycling that 
pool noodle, right? Little hacks. I love hacks. So uh, go have a fantastic day. Please be sure to comment below about things that you're doing, what you like. Go check out my Facebook page, Lisa Ely Gardens, or the YouTube channel, um, and my website, Lisa Ely Gardens. And always just be excited to grow enthusiasm, whether you're at your own garden, a school garden, or walking in the park and looking at all the gardens there. We are surrounded by nature and gardens. So go have fun, enjoy your school year, and uh, thank you so much, you guys, for joining us. And thank you to Kellogg for inviting me to play with you again. I will see you guys soon and look forward to uh, seeing what else you might want to learn about. So definitely comment. I can do a segment on anything for kids. Take care, guys. Have fun. And now, the sexy reach over and turn it off. <laughs>